is Talk Cards. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, we made it to episode nine, and yeah, we ready? Yeah, let's buckle do it. up. I need to get a seatbelt. I do too. <laughs> it's nifty. I know. Until halfway through, when you got to move, yeah, and you're stuck right. to it. Okay, let's get going on this. All right. Well, I just wanted to get started on the Ford Bronco. We talked about it last week, and Monday they announced it. What are your thoughts? Gorgeous. Yeah, I think it looks fantastic, and I personally, this is my opinion, think they knocked it out of the ballpark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They did a good job of re-rendering it, but keeping it retro and updating it so it's modern at the same time. Yeah, for sure. I you, I mean, you look back at the old the old Bronco, you know, it's this big square box, mm-hmm. and, and it you look at the new one and they took elements from that old and put it onto the new definitely but i think they did a really good job with the styling mm-hmm. um the cool features that it has that you can slide yeah. out part of the tailgate to sit on it's got a bottle opener on the tailgate like yeah some, the doors have that thing see-through or the oh, glass yeah. that kind of looks like the center i think that is legit is yeah. it glass i don't know if it's glass or if it's is just it not? open i think it's kind of like how jeep has the open door yeah. or the fj actually has one that's a mesh material I, it looked glass to me and i was like dang that's and cool. it could be they haven't really said anything yeah. about yeah. those upgraded features because obviously those are not stock yeah and even on the upgraded versions of the new bronco i don't think that that comes with it yeah that's probably i mean because in a lot of the pictures it has light bars it has lots of fancy things that True. i'm assuming don't come with it but are aftermarket um but yeah, they haven't said if that's glass, if that's supposed to be their open door. Um, not not entirely sure, but yeah, it looks fantastic. Yeah. What do you think of the removable roof and doors? I, I like think it. I think you have to have that in that market. If yeah. you're competing with, with a Jeep, Jeep yep. then you have to have that type of, of functionality. To be honest, I think it looks better with no doors and no oh, yeah. roof. Better than the Jeep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does for sure. The Jeep looks naked and weird. Yeah. But I think I, I think, think it looks. Really I think good. they did a really it, good job. Yeah, the Jeep does look a little cheap with no doors and no yeah. roof. But this looks really good. They did I a love, good job with it. I the Bronco comes with bags so you can put your doors yeah, in. Yeah, I saw that. That's actually really? so you could be in the I middle of a trail that. and be like, "Let's ditch the doors." Really? Yeah. Put them in bags and put and them in, put your, it in the back. Yep. Yeah. They're like, no need for storing your doors in like your getting scratches garage. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like you don't need to put them in your garage. Put them in the bags. Put them in the back. They're golden. You go camping, take your doors off. In the middle of a trail. I think that's just that's it's smart. genius. Yeah, that's so smart. Ford has done really good with it. Really, really good. Yeah. And, I mean, we, we've we all heard of the, the new GOAT mode that it's supposed to have. Now, I mean, that's just their off-road mode. I was going to say it's a low gear. Yeah, yeah. it's it's probably going to be their four low, and it's going to be for some hard terrain. Mm-hmm. I think that's a hilarious feature and such a smart, like, appealing to... Oh, a word that is very well known for being like the greatest the, of all best, time yeah. and yeah, that type of thing. So if it's going to live up to that, we don't know, but I think it'll be a great competitor to the off-road community. Mm-hmm. Something we need. For sure. We posted on our Instagram uh, a funny post about how Ford has come out with their new Bronco, looks amazing. Jeep has their new Wrangler. And Chevy has their new Blazer, which is like a more family yeah, oriented. Yeah. It's just which is is the similarity between like the old Dodge Dart and the new Dodge Dart. Like uh-huh. Completely different. Doesn't look anything like the old vehicle. Yeah, the Blazer is the same. Completely different. Still looks good in in its own way, but in a different way. You know, it's, it's meant it's for not the same vehicle. Yeah. yeah, and it's kind of unfortunate because we we still need that off road cape. I mean. I'm sure you can take the Blazer off-road, but it's not going to do well. No. Uh -uh. Comes with steely wheels, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I think you're getting a better bang for your buck, personally. With the Bronco? With the Bronco. Yeah. Uh, I would much rather rely and trust driving a Ford than I honestly would a Jeep. Yeah. And it's probably going to be end up... It's going to... Whoa. (laughs) It's going to end up being cheaper to fix in the end, too. So. I can see that. 
um, do you think these people that just went out and bought this brand new Jeep, do you think they're a little mad, upset? I don't know. Maybe they're Jeep people and yeah. they're, they're always going to be Jeep people. I think that's what a lot of Jeep owners are. Yeah. Are just Jeep enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what's coming out, they're probably not going to switch just because they've had a Jeep ever since they were in high school and yeah. they drove a CJ7 and or CJ5, whatever. And yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure their opinion on it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what their yeah. their thoughts are. Do you think people are actually going to take this Bronco off road? Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. I think so. I just didn't know if they would like protect or whatever. No, I think people will utilize it. I mean, they might not do it right away, and yeah. they might maybe it for a little bit. But I think it'll be like I said. I think it'll be a worthy competitor to the off road community. Mm -hmm. Comes with massive tires. It does. It does come massive. with massive tires, and it looks like the clearance is massive oh, as yeah. well. Did you? It comes with like, what did they say thirty fives really it, yeah did you see though that ford asked them to take the wrangler name off the tire because the tires are the wranglers the wrangler kind yeah <laughs> they had them take the name off wow <laughs> i thought that was that's kind of hilarious funny. yeah that's but, pretty funny yeah i think they come with 35s at least for the the first edition or the launch edition or whatever yeah. it's called which is already sold out oh which yeah is unbelievable crazy i heard that i mean we all know that they did the hundred dollar deposit kind of like mm -hmm. tesla does yeah. with all of their vehicles they did the hundred dollar deposit to reserve a uh, bronco but their site kept crashing because people were just flooding to it yeah. to get one hmm. which i mean shows you this has been in the works for a long time and it's been so highly anticipated because the bronco was such a phenomenal car yeah back in the day yep so I don't know. I'm pretty excited to see him driving around. I feel like it's going to be a more common sight than like seeing a C8 drive around where, I mean, it, it is just a Corvette, but it's still kind of unique. Mm -hmm. um, the Bronco is just going to look fantastic driving around, but I think we're going to see a lot more of them. Yeah. I know of a few people around me that have already, that have already put reserved. deposits wow. down. Yeah. That's cool. But so we nailed it with the engines. Mm -hmm. When we talked about it last week, sure enough, it's going to be the EcoBoost four and six cylinder. Yeah. And that's what I assume just because that's pretty much all that Ford is doing right yeah. now. I mean, that's, unfortunately, that is the future. I mean, I don't know if I should say, unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think we're going to see as many big V8s anymore. We're going to start seeing yeah. turbocharged four cylinder and V6. I, th I think it's, it's the V8 is dying off just because these smaller engines are more eco-friendly or mm -hmm. fuel efficient, if you will. Um, and with like it being turbocharged is producing the same amount of horsepower. Yeah. If not more. Yep. So, yeah, I think that's, that's just how um, automakers are going to be from now on is having these four and six cylinders that are turbocharged or what have you. But okay. yeah. Well, last thing about the Bronco, do you think it's going to be successful? Oh yeah. I think I think it'll last. I mean, uh, Ford kind of did something that was. It seemed a little crazy at the time, but it was smart. The more I thought about it, uh, they started to get rid of a lot of their other cars. Yeah. And I don't know if it was in preparation for this, but if you were to go out and buy a Ford, you have a very limited option of what you can get brand new now yeah. from the Ford brand. You're either getting an off-road vehicle, which they only have this one of, really. Mm -hmm. You can get an F-150 or up. They have, if you want a car, they have what the Mustang and is that it? Just the Mustang? Or do they still make the Taurus? Mm, I don't know. I think it's just the Mustang. Yeah. They they're really not. They're getting making, rid of the Focus. They're yeah. Getting, yeah. And then they've got their Escape, the Eco what's their super small SUV that or a crossover, whatever you want to the, call it. Eco sport. Oh, um, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember the escape, the edge. Yeah. The flex. Maybe. Do you think they'll get into that flex? I don't know. Actually, you know, the, the styling's kind of out. Nobody's uh -huh. going for that long boxy SUV anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that this will help, Ford, and I think it'll stay around for a while because of its history. 
Yeah. It's it's been wanted for a long time because it looks so good. If it lives up to what they say it will, I think it'll sell really well. Um, and just because of the limited cars that you can buy from Ford right now. Yeah. Um, and this is the only one that's it's true and only off-road vehicle. Whereas if you were to go uh, to Toyota when the FJ was still around, you could choose from more or less three different off-road vehicles. You could get the FJ, you could get the 4Runner, you could get the Land Cruiser. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of different options. I, yeah, you're right. The Ford only has, or Ford only has a the new Bronco and the Raptor, essentially. Yeah, which the Raptor is, is a completely truck. different yeah. because it's a truck. Mm-hmm. So I think it'll do well. Yeah. For sure. Okay, let's get into some YouTube car community. Okay. So, Stratman's recent vlog. Where would, where do you go? Oh. I have no idea. I don't know. watched it. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Went somewhere. Yeah, I don't even Probably remember. Probably Arizona. The, I think it was that. Yeah, I saw him post something about it. What? Oh, man. I don't know even know what company he went to. Okay, but they had a Bugatti there. Test drove that. Pretty great. Mm-hmm. Then he was talking about bidding on a... Did he buy the Bugatti? Uh-uh. Didn't. No. He just test drove it. Yeah. What color? Uh, it was all black. Black. Yeah. Oh, was that the one of two all black yeah. Bugattis then? I'm pretty sure it was that one. I saw something about that. So but, he didn't buy it? No. I would have been a good choice. Because it's one of two straight from Bugatti and that's all black. 1.4, and that's like in his price range. Oh, that's not even that bad. No. For being one of two. Yeah. You think he'd that's go for something like that? Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. But he was looking at on bidding on something. And it was a... On cars and bids. That's Doug DeMiro's <laughs> bidding site, right? Maybe. Yeah. But there was a G-Wagon that was made into a 6x6. So it was a 6x6 G-Wagon kind of thing. So pretty much what he did to his... Uh... Oh, so it's not factory 6x6. No. Someone did custom it. made yeah. 6x6. Oh. So, yeah, it's pretty much his Jeep Gladiator, but the G-Wagon version of it. Yeah. He thought oh. it'd be cool with them both together. That'd be kind of cool. That yeah. would be pretty cool. But how much? It went for like 180, I think. He didn't win it? No. Oh, shoot. I mean, the the normal 6x6 six six goes for a million dollars. That's true. Yeah. He said that he's going to get a 4x4 four four and just do the same thing with it. The 4x4 four four squared? Yeah, because it's it better. power and bigger. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say it's better. Yeah. It would, he would probably honestly save money doing that well the, yeah i don't know the four by four squared are still w- almost two hundred thousand yeah, dollars. They, he said that they're like around 170 okay and that's about where this one was at yeah, yeah. and or it's going to be a higher i mean the interior is going to be better and it's going to have a, a better engine yeah mm-hmm. that's true and i guess he'll know it was just a regular g-wagon that yeah the 550 or whatever it's still a cool yeah but yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So he is actually going to do this? We think. Oh, okay. So, but he didn't win that one. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure he stopped. Hmm. Stop bidding. Yeah. Because hmm. he wanted to go like 134. And but he went all the way going, up to 160? Yeah, around there. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's crazy. How many miles? 100,000. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I don't know That's, if it's worth yeah. that. 100,000 miles? That's that's pretty high, price wise at least for that amount of money. I don't know yeah. for for a G wagon that might just be breaking it in. That's yeah. true. You I mean, seen I've, with I've seen some high two hundreds. Yeah, I've seen some that are are fairly cheap, but that's because they have a hundred and ninety thousand miles and still look pristine. So that's crazy. I mean, they are reliable. Yeah, from what I understand, they're reliable. So I want one. That's cool. I do too. So do you think he's gonna do that after he gets his hypercar? I don't know. I think he's going to wait for the Gladiator Get to be gladiator done. Yeah. done. Yeah. And then maybe look into And it. then look into this. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Let's go to BS for Build. Does he have anything new? They're still working on their Apocalypse cars yeah. last time I saw okay. it. They've been working on uh, Oscars. Oscars Mustang. Yeah. Which is I saw that. Cool. It's looking so good. Which, I mean, I'm glad that they were able to kind of do the same thing that they did with the Eleanor. Yeah. Um, build that was cut short. R.I.P. Yeah. Eleanor. Yeah, for real. 
So I'm kind of glad that they were able to do a similar type build with it. Obviously, it's not going to look as amazing or be as called. the other one. What? That's or be called the Eleanor. Or, yeah, they can't call it that even. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm really impressed with, with how they've been able. They did it pretty quick, too. They did the, yeah. the whole body swap within, like, one episode. And he said they're going to show Kyle's build. Who he's been working on he, his, right? Yeah, I think Kyle's been working on his in the background, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not entirely sure, but they did mention that Kyle's build didn't involve much. Yeah. And they haven't even revealed the car that Kyle's is, have they? I don't think they have. Have they not? I'm not sure. I know that they revealed... Obviously, they have revealed Oscars, but... I can't remember if they had an episode revealing both of them. Was his a BMW? Yes. Was it? Yeah. I believe it was a BMW like. Oh, you're right. I think it was. Yeah. It was the the cheaper model. Yeah. It wasn't an M series. No, it wasn't. But I don't know what kind it was. 335i or something I don't like know that. BMW very yeah. well. So that's right. And it, yeah, I don't think they had a lot to do on it. See, it's been so long. I forgot about yeah. what he even had. <laughs> I had to think for a second. And Chris... But Chris is is a wild build. It is wild. I think it would be sick to see it on the road. A single-seater, almost like F1-style car yeah. that's custom. Oh, I'm not 100% sure how that's really apocalypse-themed, other than like going fast and escaping them that way. Yeah. But either way, I'm impressed with it. It'll be cool. I think it would be awesome to see when it's finally done. For sure. Isn't there a car in Fast and Furious with, like, the ramp and it's yeah. only one seater? Yeah. Or is yep. it two? Uh, I, I think know. it's just a I single seater. Yeah. Okay. He hits the cars and goes under them. Yeah. Yeah. Goes through the tunnels. Did you guys see that Savage Garage is looking at a Pagani? Mm-mm. Pagani. Along with his Koenigsegg. If he yeah. owned both of those, could that you imagine? Cool. That would be cool. He has a lot of cars. It'd he be does. him competing with uh, Manny. Manny. Yeah, Manny has a lot. Manny's got everything. Manny he has like have what, three Bugattis. Oh my gosh! Has, yeah, does he have three? I only know of the two. He does have because he has the Mansory, doesn't he? Nope. No, that's oh royalty doesn't even have no. that anymore. I don't know where that is now. I don't know huh. either. No, he but he, I downgraded. think he's got three. He's got two Veyrons and a Chiron. And a Chiron. But then I mean, he's also got a P one. Yeah, also, yeah, he has. He's a got lot. a Senna. He's got, yeah, he has a lot. It's really cool. Yep. But this Pagani also has a $300,000 package on it. Wow. I don't know. I don't know if What's it's like different? a carbon. Yeah. It's just a... It's like a brown carbon or something a like that. A bare car... Uh, a brown carbon. Brown carbon? Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Maybe like a brown weave? Yeah. Could be. Or like... Could be the color and stuff uh, like that. Manning, he has the leather person do the insides. Maybe has some of that. Yeah. Or, it's just a something. custom... Yeah. But it's 600000 Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. I guess I could see. I mean, I everything say, with those cars is so expensive yeah. that oh, yeah. any modifications going to be a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you look at a uh, Tavares's build where he's redoing the um, the McLaren, yeah. and he he's talking about the prices of everything, and he's like, if I were to get a new bumper, it's like forty thousand dollars from the factory. Like forty thousand dollars. That's a new car. That is a new car. <laughs> but I mean, everything with with that type of car is just going to yeah. be expensive. So I could see. Well, and I mean, the more you get into those boutique builders like Pagani, Koenigsegg, yeah. it's going to be it's very be expensive. Extra expensive. Yeah, for sure. Like when paint starts to cost $60,000 for a different color uh -huh. or a special color, that's when you know that. Oh yeah. Just changing the leather stitching is going to be a $30,000 job. So that's crazy. Well, I had a thought pop into my mind and I wanted to, to ask you guys this question and see see what you guys think so what do you think are the best looking cars we'll start with pre-2000 because I, I think that's the in my opinion the best era for good looking cars most of the cars that i like are pre-2000 what do you think is your favorites pre-2000 pre-2000 so i i think i speak for most people when I say the Lamborghini Miura. The Miura, oh, yeah. definitely. And I think it's the best looking car ever. Yeah. I think that would be my number one choice is the Miura. Yeah. The Miura is just this unique, 
it's just gorgeous. Yep. And the a shape. lot of cars are kind of modeled after it. Yeah. Um, but obviously nothing matches. It's it's just awesome. Yep. What about you? And the car that popped in my mind was the Countach. Countach is good looking. Another line. It, it's really defining because oh, yeah. they just kind of went all out with this crazy. I mean, every kid had that growing yeah. up. Oh, absolutely. Eighties kid. Yeah. Nineties mm-hmm. kid had it growing up. I had one. You know, when I was like six, seven, growing up as a poster. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I like, wish I had one. I yeah, wish no. I did. I like, no, no. Every but kid had a poster. It was a right? poster yeah. car. You know, I went from the Countach to the Diablo. Yep. So, but I, it was that crazy look. You know, it's always been that dream car. Yeah. I don't know if, in my opinion, it'd be the best looking, yeah. but it, it is a very iconic look. And it really started Lamborghini's wave into the more square yeah. front, mm-hmm. square back. And like just all these sharp points and yeah. everything. And like then the wing. That went away with the Murcielago. Yeah. I where mean, it was all rounded. It yeah. still kind of held that yeah. shape. The I mean, Countach had pop-ups. Murcielago didn't. But, I mean, it kind of had the same mm-hmm. overall features. You could tell that they were, one was more or less an older version of yeah. the other. I. I guess the one aspect that they did carry over is the bat wings, the the vents that oh, pop yeah. up when you're going fast yep. to let more air in uh, or when your engine's hot. I think that's cool. That is cool. And that definitely came over from the Countach because it had those big square ones on the mm-hmm. back. But Interesting. I think one of mine is a car that's a little bit more affordable and also readily available, but it's always been a dream car of mine, and it's the Porsche 928. A lot of people think it's ugly. I think it's just absolutely beautiful yeah but i still kick myself about that 928 yeah i mean me and jake were looking at 928s probably like 10 years ago. yeah 10 years ago wanting to buy one when they were like five thousand dollars running and in pretty good condition yep you can't really find them for like less than 20 now they yeah. skyrocketed and i just think it's a fantastic car it Porsche really doesn't do a whole lot in the V8 category. This was an 80s car that had a V8. Pop-ups were round instead of square, Mm -hmm. which is ugly but also intriguing. Uh, The back of it is just completely unique. Yeah, I think the back is the best looking car. Absolutely. The back is just amazing. But, yeah, that's definitely one of my favorites and probably, in my opinion, one of the best looking cars So what would you guys say would be some of your favorite cars from post-2000? I have one. Okay. I mean, there have been some great-looking cars post-2000, but I think the best is the Aston Martin Superleggera. That one is fantastic. The brand-new. Yeah, the brand-new one. Aston Martin Superleggera. I think they have styled that perfect. Yeah. I will say that Aston Martin is probably the leader in style right now. Yeah. All of their cars from more recent years, maybe 2015 on, have all just looked very luxurious. I mean, they are expensive cars, but they look even more expensive than they actually are. Yeah. They just look so good. Is quality there? Maybe. Eh, That one's debatable. But they look amazing. Yeah. This Superleger looks amazing beautiful yeah that front grille is just big and yeah massive but it's so cool what do you think ty um i have three of them okay okay actually only two of them okay <laughs> wow okay uh the mclaren 720s okay. okay yeah that's a good one and the law ferrari yeah La ferrari is fantastic yep definitely a rare find definitely yeah. just a good unique um expensive Car. Very yeah. expensive. I I think that Ferrari has always done well with their hypercars, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. most expensive car, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the Enzo or the La Ferrari yeah. or the F40. The F50 wasn't that good looking, mm-hmm. but the F40 was pretty good looking. Yeah. But definitely, I think the La Ferrari is a, a good car to look at. Like it's easy on the eyes, and it's. And I'll again go back to the lower end of the price range where I (laughs) thanks for bringing us down a little bit. I mean, we're talking (laughs) a couple millions to something that a normal person might be able to afford. And I am going to bring up the C8 just because that's been mentioned many times on this podcast. The Mm -hmm. C8 is 
for the price, I think the best looking car that you can get for sixty, seventy thousand dollars. Yeah. That's new. Yep. Yeah. If you're gonna go that route and get a used car, I actually think the Lotus Evora is probably one of your best bets. Yeah. It the Evora is really good. It looking. really is a good looking car. And again, to your point, it's not harsh. Yeah. It's this car that you would see driving on the road and you would turn your head and go, What was that again? Yeah, like that's not a brand I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not a car you see very often. It's not a brand that you see almost at all. Yeah. And it just has this look that is similar to Porsche in a way, mm-hmm. similar to a whole bunch of other kind of companies and brands and makes, but is its own thing, has a very reliable engine in it, and it's just overall, for the price, a pretty good looking car. Yeah. So when you said that, it made me think, I see Lamborghinis, Bentleys, Ferraris more than I see a Lotus. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And a large part of that is because I know the United States was a little bit iffy on the mm-hmm. Lotus for a little while just yeah. because of safety and stuff like that. But, I mean, again, they they really didn't produce a whole lot of Lotuses. Yeah. But all of their cars, even the old ones pre-2000, mm-hmm. are good looking. Yeah. So maybe I should sell the Challenger and buy an Evora. Or we just... I don't ever see them. That's true. The only YouTuber that I know that has an Evora is Chris from Bees for Build. Yeah. And he doesn't show it anymore, mainly because that build is, is gone, and now I think his uh, fiance drives it. Uh, she used to How drive, sick is that? Yeah, she used to drive the, the BMW M5. <laughs> until she wrecked it. Until, yeah, she rear-ended someone or someone rear-ended her yeah. or something like that. And then he was just like, well, here's the Evora. That's so cool. And <laughs> the Evora, his Evora looks so good. It has yeah. that front... Um, splitter, the rear diffuser, it just looks so mean. Yep. And it has the white on, it's the white on black. I love that. And look. it looks so good. It looks so I good. I think we need to see some YouTubers. Stradman needs to go buy an Elise. Mm-hmm. Kind of bring him back to his old days. The electric blue or whatever he called yeah. it. The electric blue Elise. And yeah, we, so we need to see some YouTubers buy some Lotus and buy an Aston Martin Super Legera, mm-hmm. the new one. We just don't see that. Okay, so let's do some uh, quick fire news. Let's okay. just get some initial reactions. Okay. Um, GM will have 12 electric vehicles soon. 12. 12. Interesting. Yep. Mm-hmm. The fact that they haven't really released one. I feel like they said this two years ago. They're like, yeah, we're going to come out with a ton of electric cars. I, and we haven't seen very no, many. No, and I th- was it GM? I don't remember who it was exactly. One of the car companies was like, by 2030, we want to have all of our cars yeah. electric. Yep. I don't remember who it was, so don't quote me on that. But one of them, I think it was Volkswagen, actually. But anyway, huh, that's interesting. The Fisker Ocean Electric SUV <laughs> will use the VW's <laughs> MEV platform. The, the fact they're using VW's platform is cool. But that's a terrible name. I'm sorry. Fisker Ocean. Fisker and it's just, Ocean. It's weird looking. It's Fisker for just crying out me loud. Me saying that sentence, I was just like, Fisker Ocean Electric SUV. Like, it was just terrible. It just didn't flow. Yeah. No. And looks terrible, too. I'm sorry. It's just Fisker. Like, they haven't. They don't have a good reputation as is. No. Uh, someone's going to be very upset. But the Honda Fit has been discontinued. Ooh. Oh. I'm so sorry, Mike. <laughs> no more Fit. Uh, well, that's funny because Chevy is also getting rid of the Spark. Yeah, nobody so, wants those small cars. No, anymore. they don't want those small, tiny, squished, compact no, cars. No, they see anymore. what happens when you get in a crash with them. You just roll. It sends you flying. Yeah, the Honda Civic Coupe is dead. No more two door coupe, uh, or no more two door Civic. I mean, uh, I mean, okay, yeah. Nobody wants a two. I'm sorry, the two door on my Challenger. It's fine because they're massive doors. My kids can yeah. get in and out easy. Yeah. But if it's a small car. I mean, in my opinion, if you're going to get a car with two doors now, either have it be a muscle car or have it be a Corvette. like Or a luxury car that it's just you and your spouse. Exactly. You know? Or a convertible. Yeah. Where there is just is no back seat. Yep. So go Miata. Honda Accord loses manual transmission. 
the Honda oh. Accord. Oh shoot! I, I think even... everything's losing yeah. a manual transmission. I didn't even know it still had a manual I didn't either. Actually, I know some Volkswagens do, but that's about it. It's crazy. Oh, and I think the Veloster N only comes in does it manual but i mean those specialty cars that yeah, are meant yeah. more for like the nurburgring and stuff yeah that makes like sense the gti will still come yeah possibly with a manual transmission heartbreaking sad news okay yoshihiko the designer of the datsun 240z has oh, died oh man <sighs> beautiful car that, that is, is another oh, yeah. that car. that's one that we should have brought up that I one know. is a fantastic looking car yeah he was 86 Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Did he only design the 240, or did he continue the Z? I think he continued the Z series, if I, if I'm not mistaken. But it's, I mean, the 240Z is that legendary. Oh yeah, car. that's that's the beginning. Oh, that's another car I should have brought up in is one of my favorite all time pre 2000s. Yeah. Is the, um, early 90s 300ZX. It's a good looking car. That's too. a beautiful yeah. car. Very unreliable, but really cool. Uh, it was just the engine, pretty much, yeah. but that's also because it was twin-turboed back in the yeah. day. <laughs> uh, 2021 Maserati Ghibli Hybrid is the first electric car from Maserati. Cool. Now you can break down in electric <laughs> or gas. Okay. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so here's something interesting. Electric cars are gener- generally more reliable. Yeah. Or they say they are, but yet Tesla's the least reliable auto brand out there, mm-hmm. according to JD Power. Uh, but if this is going to be more reliable, will this help Maserati? Or maybe, is it still just going to be a slow death for them? I kind of hope it helps because I think I've mentioned this before. Um, Maserati really does produce some good looking yeah. cars. Yeah. Their cars are, are really good looking. Their reliability and performance just isn't yeah. there. Yeah. So hopefully this will help it, but I'm also not one who's crazy about hybrid. Yeah. So. Uh, 2021 Audi A7 gets a 362 horsepower plug-in hybrid version. Interesting. We were just talking about the A7 yeah, we before yeah. before we started the show. So now it has a plug-in hybrid version. Interesting. Okay. Uh, again, it's going to be expensive. It, It'll be... it looks like a hybrid car. Like It looks like it could be a hybrid. Yeah, I, I can see it. Audi doesn't have any other hybrids, do they? Mm-hmm. They have the e-tron. Oh, that's right. Yep. Uh, Nissan introduces a new logo. It looks like this. Oh. Oh. That looks think? like something that would be on. We'll put it on the screen. Car. Yeah, I'll put it up on the screen. But I, I don't want my truck to have that type of yeah, thing on it. Could you imagine that on your Titan? It'd be kind of. That'd be weird. weird. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well. Last news. Tesla's dropping the price on their Model Y. Oh. I think I don't that's even just, know how much they are. No, I don't either. I think that's just because nobody's really buying cars. Yeah. I saw a Model Y yesterday. They look weird. They're an awkward shape. I've they seen, are. I've seen one in person, and at first I was like, is that an X or is that a 3? Yeah, I was like, hey, look, a Model X. And I'm like, that's not an X. That's like and then I was like, Yeah, and then weird. I was like, is it a 3? And then I was like, no, because it's like short and kind of tall. Yeah. Didn't they say... It was going to come out cheap, but then they ended up going higher That's price. That's what Tesla always does. Yeah. yeah. But now they're just bringing it back down. Yeah. Right. Buying Tesla, it. Tesla's always done yeah. that. I saw one today, and, like, I'm not dissing on Tesla. I think what they're doing is fantastic, mm-hmm. and they're really making the biggest stride, in my opinion, towards um, the electric car market, yeah. which is great. Good for them. Good for Elon but they're kind of designed so weird. Yeah. I see them they're coming so at Yeah, I see them coming at me and I'm like that looks so I feel uncomfortable when I see it. And I don't know if it's because it just doesn't have a grill and that's just weird to me. Yeah. Or if weird. it it just looks I mean, we have 100 plus years of cars with grills cuz they have to breathe. Yeah. yeah. And, and then now all of a sudden they're one. not. Yeah. Well, and then it, I've noticed that they kind of have this lip at the top that looks yeah. like it got punched <laughs> in the mouth and, and it has a fat lip. Up. <laughs> So, I don't know. Once we start seeing the the Tesla truck, the cyber truck out uh, there, we're yeah. all going to be like, yeah, yeah See, let's that's, Rivion hurry. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm banking on them to hurry and produce the, the Rivion. I, don't yep. even, I can't remember the model number or no, whatever it's supposed to be, but the RT1 or something like yeah. that. But at least it looks normal. Yep. Okay. I think that's it. Last bit of breaking news. 
the Fiat Chrysler, so FCA, yeah, and Peugeot are merging together to make one company, and they have renamed it Stellantis. 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 What? Is Stellantis. That? Stel- Stellantis. 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 I mean, come on. So technically, I own. A Stellantis Challenger. <laughs> wow. Or the that, Stellantis Dodge Challenger. Are they gonna be we making, need to change your uh, shirt then. I know. Say Stellantis. Are they going to be making a logo for that? I don't know. Probably. But I, I would assume so. That's weird. But it's... I don't like the name. I don't like the name. And hopefully Dodge kind of separates themselves from that. They usually yeah. do. That side. But... Yeah. Stellantis. Dodge Hellcat Stellantis. No, it would be... <laughs> Stel- Stellantis yeah. Dodge Hellcat. Oh, yeah. Because Stellantis is like the big is parent the, company. Yeah. Like Demon. It doesn't fit with those. Stellantis doesn't Stellantis. fit with anything. No, that makes me feel uncomfortable. They said it was like a Latin name. I'm sure or something it like has that. some weird meaning to it. or And that's probably the Peugeot side coming out. Yeah. But I'm sorry. Don't name. I'd rather <laughs> say FCA or Fiat Chrysler yeah. Automobiles, yeah. you know. Than Stellantis. Stellantis. Sounds like something underwater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Atlantis. <laughs> I think Fisker needs to buy it and name their car the Stellantis. Yeah, for real. <laughs> it'll go with the. It'll be the Stellantis Ocean. Yeah. Uh, I yeah no not not crazy about that one. We'll Gosh. see what happens. Stellantis. It's a terrible name. Oh, it says the word has a Latin root, which means to brighten with stars. Oh, <laughs> oh <my. laughs> that is so terrible. That is bad. Who came up with this? Oh my gosh. That's I'm, I'm going to continue to say Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. Yeah. That's yeah. it. I'm sorry. It's a longer name, but it at least sounds proper. Gosh. Stellantis. Stellantis. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. And on that note, I, I think that's where we should end, I end yeah. this. I agree. Um, but thank you for listening to our pad, podcast. <laughs> And watching. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our podcast and, and also watching our podcast if you're tuning in via um, our new YouTube channel. If not, you should go and, and definitely check it out. Uh, you can go and find us and follow us at Brothers Talk Cars on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. So yep. uh, we appreciate you guys supporting us, and uh, we'll see you later. Peace. Peace. Ow.